Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to walk you through Chromatic Aberration from Red Giant Universe. Now, this plugin has been a part of Universe for quite some time. I'd like to go over the entire plugin, but I'll also be stopping along the way to point out what is new and what we've changed. I'll apply Chromatic Aberration by going to my effects and locating the Universe Distort category. Chromatic Aberration will be right there. And I'll drop this on my clip. If your host app supports it, you can also use the dashboard under your window extensions and locate it under the distort category and apply the effect that way. Chromatic aberration is an effect that is simulates lens distortion where the center is in focus, but as the lens curves towards the edges, the different wavelengths of light don't focus correctly and the effect ends up being a spectrum or rainbow kind of effect where we split our colors apart. Now to illustrate how the old version of chromatic aberration worked, I'm gonna set the radial blur to zero and I'm going to zoom in on the lower right corner of this image. The old version of chromatic aberration was limited to three finite channel splits between red, green, and blue. So we split the channel up three different ways into its component colors, distorted them each slightly differently, and then we used a radial blur or sort of a zoom blur to blend things together. And this approach kind of works, but where you have details like this, you really do start to see some of the shortcomings of this approach. So I'll set this radial blur back to zero and I'll jump down to this control here called passes. Passes defaults to three, and this gives us three splits of red, green, and blue. But we aren't limited to three. This could be any arbitrary number all the way up to 128. This is using a brand new process where we are interpolating from red through green through blue and making a much smoother chromatic aberration. In fact, I'll turn up this distortion amount to exaggerate this. Now, once we turn this way up, you can still see some of the steps in there and we can keep turning this up. Just be mindful that the higher number of the passes, the more the rendering expense. So let's contrast that with the old way where we set this to three. You can definitely see a huge difference there even with this radial blur turned up. So I'll reset this to its default settings and let's just start talking about the parameters in there. The first control in here, which is the center control, is actually a new control. We've added the ability to refocus the image and control the center point around which the distortion and blurring happen. The distortion amount is essentially a multiplier to all of the distortion that's happening on each pass. So if I set this to something like 13, this will do 13 passes, and on each of the passes, it will do an increasing amount of lens distortion. This distortion amount is essentially a multiplier to each pass, so we can control all of the distortion that's happening on all of the passes through this distortion amount. Lens radius is a measurement in pixels, that affects a number of controls, both the distortion as well as the blur controls. So we've got a radial blur as well as a Gaussian blur that I haven't mentioned yet. But if I lower this value, let's say I set this to 400, this will shrink the area that is being affected by the blur and distortion. Larger value will push those distortion and blurs more towards the edges. Now, I've mentioned that chromatic aberration is simulating a lens effect where we have lens distortion, where it's fairly flat in the center, but as it curves out towards the edges, we have more distortion. We also have a scale control that will progressively add increasing amounts of scale to each of the passes that we have set. So if I set this distortion amount to zero, and I go into the scale, and I set this to something like 1.2, Instead of having that lens distortion where it's fairly flat in the center and distorted around the edges, using scale with chromatic aberration is going to have a very different look. It's going to have more of this chromatic zoom kind of effect. By default, this is actually set to 1, so we won't see any scale, but this is another way you can add subtle amounts of chromatic aberration. Now, 1.2 is pretty high, but you could set this to, say, 1.05. So what this means is that the first pass that it does is going to be set to a normal one-to-one -one scale or a scale of 100%. And then as it passes through and does all the iterations, the last iteration will be scaled up 
to this factor here, 1.05 or essentially 5%. So it's progressively scaling the image up to this amount that we set right here. Now where it gets really interesting is where we uncheck the uniform scale and start scaling X and Y differently. So this will start scaling outward in the X axis like this. So the effect is that we end up with the center a bit more in focus and then we have this chromatic blending out towards the edges. We can also set this to scale in the Y. I'll set this to something fairly high like 1.4. You almost end up with a kind of chromatic tilt shift kind of effect. Now all of these scale controls also respond to this center control. So if I'd like something a bit more in focus, like where this car is, I can take the center point and move it to where the car is located. Now 1.4 is a bit exaggerated, but again, you might want to experiment with slightly lower values. Now I'll check this uniform scale box and set this scale to 1.2 because there's one more control I want to show. So being that we already had scale transformations being applied progressively on each pass, we said, well, why not add rotation? So now this will also progressively rotate on each pass and you end up with this chromatic swirl effect. We're certainly not mimicking any sort of real world lens effect, but it is definitely a very interesting stylization effect. I'm gonna reset the whole plugin at this point and I'll turn up the distortion amount to maybe 2.5, turn up my passes to nine, and we'll talk about the blur controls. The Gaussian blur is essentially a compound blur. It's less blurry in the center and then gets blurrier around the edges. This again follows the lens radius. So if I turn this down to maybe 500, we'll see this Gaussian kind of blur, kind of this dreamy effect. A little bit goes a long way, so we can keep that pretty low. And as I've mentioned, the radial blur is mostly there to function as a blending between the different passes. You'll also notice that this radial blur is actually a compound radial blur. So it's clear in the center and gets progressively more blurry towards the edges. This is actually another change we've made with chromatic aberration. The old version simply masked a copy of the original image and feathered the edges to blend the radial blur together. This new version of chromatic aberration is actually using a more sophisticated compound radial blur. Being that they are compound blurs, the fall off is essentially going to control that midpoint or point at which we start to transition from no blur into its maximum amount of blur. So if I set this to a low value, the midpoint or fall off start will start a lot closer to the center. I'll click on reset there. Chromatic saturation simply refers to the overall saturation of the passes that we're doing. If I set this to zero, we'll see no chromatic saturation whatsoever. It's essentially kind of a radial blur or zoom kind of effect. If I set this to 50, we can split the difference. Chromatic tint is a tint or hue adjustment of the overall chromatic separation process. The channel section of chromatic aberration was brought forward from the old version. The tricky thing is that we don't really have a discrete red, green, or blue channel. So instead of adjusting the red distortion of the red channel, we're actually adjusting the individual distortion of what are mostly the red components of the passes. Same goes for green distortion. It is not just the green distortion, but what is mostly the set of green passes in the multi-pass process. Same goes for the red, green, and blue channel scale. So I can scale these up, but you'll see that we are actually scaling a cluster of passes that are mostly around the red color. Let's zoom back out to 100%. Additional lens distortion is just that. It's kind of a secondary lens distortion that allows you to apply a second pass of lens distortion to the entire image. And the flatten control allows you to flatten out the curvature of the lens. Next, we have a section called the lens texture section. And this is a set of preset textures that are built into the plugin. We can select one of these and add some simple lens texture around the edges. If this is difficult to see, I'll turn up the texture amount. 
all the way to 100. By default, it's actually masked in the center, so we don't cover up the entire image. But if you'd like to see the entire texture, you can uncheck Texture Mask. You can also show the mask area by checking this box to see what is visible with the textured area and what isn't. And then we have mask radius, fall off, and aspect controls, which I think are pretty straightforward, but we can adjust the overall mask area, its fall off, as well as the aspect of the shape. You can also use a custom map simply by applying a custom layer right there. And if you do so, you can tell it to stretch the map to fit if they differ in size from your original source image. I'll set this back to none. The linear gamma switch simply controls the internal process by which we are breaking apart images and blending them back together. When we leave this set to linear gamma, everything is being processed in a linear space. If you'd like to disable that, you can simply uncheck the linear box. Lastly, we have a reverse function. And what this does is reverse the whole process of the passes that we're doing. So instead of having red on the outside, green in the middle, and blue on the inside, if I check this, it will reverse the process where red is now on the inside, green still in the middle, and blue is on the outside. That is Chromatic Aberration from Red Giant Universe. My name is Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.